My um, guidance lesson to be about building peer relationships, I have one class that really focuses more on negativity and competition um, instead of positivity and getting to know their peers. Um, I think it's because of that, there's a lot of animosity in the class and just a lot of people that are getting down because people are just saying negative things and rude things and, you know, I think if they got to know each other a little bit better and all became friends, it would drastically change their relationships. So um, we did this lesson last week. I would say two 30-minute periods would last or however long, maybe one 45-minute, depending on how long things go and last between your classes. But we started with the open-ended and closed-ended uh, questions. We discussed what they each meant. I gave them examples. Um, and then I timed them, and I had them first practice closed-ended questions, and then I had them pro practice open-ended questions with the tape, same type of question, but this time just being more um, observant and, you know, asking other questions on top of it, such as, like, that just make the conversation flow more to get to know each other more. The uh, closed-ended question conversations lasted maybe one to two minutes. The open-ended questions, they were talking for five minutes and they probably could have kept talking if I didn't stop them. Um, we also talked about the etiquette of talking and how it made them feel when they were looking at them and you could tell that they were in, really interested in the conversation versus like uninterested in the conversation, um, which led to the role play of the students. Um, this is something that really resonated with them. So I took half of the students um, and told them, to watch for my hand signals and I told them told the other kids that to think of like the best story they've ever heard like in, in their life or um, like movies or books or anything that they've read and just talk 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 and just keep talking no matter what so the other kids I told them with the hand signals that if I held up a number one um, well, at first, they're really engaged. They're doing all the things that I said about conversation etiquette up at the top. Um, once they see me holding a number one, they may start lacking self-control, looking around. The eye, the eye contact isn't as there anymore. When I hold up the number two, they start to become bored. They put their hands on their face. They like maybe have their phone out, they may be playing with their hands or whatever. And then the number three, they may just like straight up get up and leave turn around and start talking to someone else and things like that. Um, and the students that were telling the stories had absolutely no idea what to expect. So they were sitting there talking and, you know, you could tell that, like, when the per person was really into the conversation, they were super excited about it. And, you know, they were, they were excited to tell the story. And then as, like, the kids started getting... Um, more bored, especially during the number two hand signal, the kids were like looking at me like, why are they being so disrespectful? Why, why are they acting like this? What did you tell them to do? And then by number three, like some of the kids were like, seriously, like what is wrong with you? I'm trying to tell you the story. And then they got like anxious and got really upset about it. So then I just, we stopped and we discussed like our feelings, like how did that make you feel when this was happening? And you know, what do you think it's like when you start acting like that towards somebody else? Like, of course, they're going to get upset. They're going to feel like you don't like them um, and things like that. So it's really, even though you may be, if you may really like them and you may really be into the conversation, if you're on your phone or if you're looking around, they're going to think that you don't like them or you aren't interested in what they have to say. So I think that that really resonated with them. So then at the end, I assigned them a buddy, um, someone who I thought that they didn't really get to know that well. Um, for my class this time, I instead of letting them choose somebody, I just picked people just because there were certain people that really needed it. Um, but they wrote down on their cards three things that they wanted them to know about them, two questions that they had, and then one thing to show appreciation. The one thing to show appreciation was something that the kids – really enjoyed and I think really helped build their peer relationships a lot because a lot of times they didn't think that they appreciated them at all. So just knowing like, oh, I've, I've seen that you like to read. I appreciate about that about you. Like, I think it's really cool. Or, you know, 
I may not always laugh at your jokes, but I, I do think you're really funny. Um, you know, once we talked about all their feelings, they were super happy about that. Um, so here are some of the cards. Um, along with some of the questions that they got to talk about, which kept their conversations flowing. Um, so they did have more open-ended questions. So overall, I think the lesson went really well. Um, it was definitely something that my kids needed badly, um, just because with the competitiveness and the lack of social social skills, on top of all that, like just really was bringing down the kids and everything like that. So I wouldn't really change too much. I would base it off of your kids. I would just be aware of like the time needed and then maybe like keep building on that. Um, so I'm always, I'm going to continue each week doing the buddy system so they can get to know each other so it doesn't just end um, after this lesson. Okay, bye.